Hello, my name is Sunsfan, and you may have forgotten that you are subscribed to this channel because we haven't made a video in two freaking years. And if you haven't heard, of course, the remake of Artifact, aka Artifact 2.0, also known as Artifact Foundry, has now been ceased. Uh, I've sent an email to Gabe Newell to try to undo this, do the old Control Z. Uh, you know, remains to be seen whether that's actually going to happen. I talked about a lot about this on my podcast. Uh, if you guys want to hear the full story, I will leave the link in the description. It's about, you know, 20 minutes of me talking about the beginning of Artifact 1 and then on to the current stage. So you can kind of get up to date. So what I wanted to do here, uh, because since the game is basically going to die, uh, I've been wanting to make a couple videos. So I'm just going to make these couple videos and, you know, do a tournament for fun. And, you know, if that drums up enough interest from the community, then that's great. If not, then, you know, I still had fun. I've been playing Artifact 2.0, which is, again, I'm going to keep calling it 2.0, but it's Foundry, for a ugh, almost a year now, and it is the most, it, I find it to be far more fun than 1.0. So what I want to do in this video is, again, I'm making a second video that's going to be talking about the very basics of the game for somebody that's never played Artifact at all, but this video is for the people that are already subscribed to this channel about what the differences are between 1.0 and 2.0. Uh, so let's do that. And then I'll take you through a game of draft, which is my personal favorite mode uh, for this artifact. Again, you can download the game for free. Everything's completely free to play. Uh, if you do constructed, you get all the cards right away. If you do draft, uh, you essentially have a collective pool of whoever you're playing against, whoever has the highest amounts, the highest common, common denominator. You share those same heroes, those same cards. And then as you play more, you get your own cards that you can you know, add to that shared pool and whatnot. So... Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about before I get into a game is the hero redesigns. The stats are a lot different than 1.0, as you can tell. They're like Bristleback as an example, super different stat line. Uh, but the thing that they've done overall is made the, the game more hero centric. Uh, a lot of these heroes have two abilities now. I'm not going to go through every single one. They've all, which makes them just feel much more impactful, much more interesting. And again, it's very centric or centered on the hero themselves. So, in my opinion. I find it a lot more fun. Um, let's see, what else? Of course, they've added some new heroes. And I'm trying to remember who was not in Artifact 1. <laughs> it's been so long since I've played that it's difficult to remember. Uh, I don't believe Phantom Lancer was in there. The old Troll Warlord was not as well. Uh, just get a couple of heroes from each respective side. Oh, Death Prophet is... Oh, I love Death Prophet. She's so good. And of course, all the old heroes are there uh, as well. I mean, another example of the hero redesigns being completely different. Keef, who was by design the worst hero in the game along with the other neutral creeps is actually decent. Uh, they're all fairly balanced. His stat line is respectable. His skill is pretty cool. And his card is, I mean, it's somewhat situational. Like you're playing, it's a really high DPS target like against a black card deck, for example, and this would be good. Uh, they've gotten rid of as I'm just going to queue for a draft game now, they've gotten rid of a lot of RNG that people complained it about in 1.0 over and over. Um, and yeah, the game, in my opinion, is just far more fun, which it's sad to see that they're not really going to continue development. But uh, as we wait to get into this game, I'm just going to explain some other mechanics that have changed. I have my list over here. So there's still three lanes. One enormous, and there's a lot of big differences, by the way, and for a lot of 1.0 people, it's kind of polarizing, and they're not sure if they like 2.0 as much, and I can understand why, but I think overall, all the changes have made the game feel more accessible to just the general public. It's not like this, it's still a really deep game, but they have made it a little bit easier to grasp. So there's still three lanes, like I said, but... You can only have five units in each lane, so it's not unlimited anymore. Um, you can only have, or sorry, the, and before you would play one lane at a time, now you're playing all of them at the same time, which sounds more complicated, but actually not, because it's shared mana. You don't spend mana in one lane, one lane, one lane. It's all collective. So each action just has a bigger impact. They feel more important overall. And... They've gotten rid of like the arrows, obviously, just anything like this pure RNG. They've pretty much gotten rid of most, if not all of them. Whoa, all right, we're in a game. 
So this is the hero draft. It's different than 1.0, which was phantom draft, where you select all the cards in your deck. In this one, you only select your heroes, and then it constructs a deck for you randomly, um, which they put a lot of different out. Like, they change this a lot over the course of the few months that we've been playing it, but it feels really good. And again, I like it's just more accessible this way. You don't have to... Phantom Draft is also great. I loved it. And it would also be really good in this mode. But I feel like this draft is more important overall. So he takes Bristleback. It's kind of like a back and forth, a snake. Is this a snake? Is it possible to have a snake draft with only two people? Tidehunter is really good. So I'm going to take him. Uh, Anti-Mage just got buffed. Oh, I don't know if I want to play him, though. That's a little scary. Take Omni Knight. Get some nice big bodies. So as you can see, we take six heroes. And then we drop one essentially so i don't have to commit to green or red at this stage it looks like he's committed to some sort of red strat um i'll try to pick newer heroes actually i should have picked am i apologize i'm just trying to win all right we're gonna take tiny this is a really cool green hero that looks like he has garbage stats but i'll talk about him a little later he's very important to have as your last hero because his grow um is able to be used off cooldown immediately on that last turn um, all right, none of these are new, I believe, so we're just going to take good old Beastmaster, the old classic. I think he's a very, very good red hero in this game. As he continues his mono red, it seems. Ooh, we got Underlord, who I don't believe was an artifact one. This is the best green hero in the game. Oh, my God, we are getting god-tier heroes, by the way. Timbersaw. I know I said I'd take new heroes. I apologize in advance, but Wraith King is very bad. So we're going to take Timbersaw. He's probably just going to take LC, and I think I actually would rather have... Let me think. Omni Knight has the, one of the few dispels in the game, which is good against the minus armor of Ursa, which still is there. But Timbersaw is just better. I don't need Tiny, but I want to show him off because he's cool. So starting lineup, Tidehunter for sure, Underlord for sure, and Timbersaw, sure. Okay, so these are going to be my five discarding Omni Knight, and here we go. So deployment is somewhat similar to Artifact 1. The creeps will always spawn on the left side, though, and they're only 1-1s. One so there's a lot of way to manipulate that. Um, you can see my mana pool here, gold here. My cam is right here. Uh, <laughs> very important. So this is the mid. This is a blind choice of only three slots that we can go. And we won't be able to see what he's doing until we've actually locked it in. Uh, so for me, I'm trying to think what I want to do here. Uh, he has a Bristleback, an Ursa, and a Sven. He might put Sven right in the middle. Either way, I'm going to put Tide right in the center because Ravage, which he still has, is two slots away, which means if you're in the middle, it'll apply to everybody. Uh, he also has Anchor Smash, which we'll get to in just a moment. So this is perfect for me. Um, so now we go to the off lane where he will be able to match up against us. And this is going to be his off lane and my safe lane on the left side. So whoever is going to be here, likely Ursa is just going to want to ram into, which I would actually rather it not be Underlord. Underlord is very important to me. Uh, we're going to put Timber here. In fact, I'm going to do something weird. So these other lanes, you can put them in pretty much any slot. I'm actually going to take over this creep, and I'll explain why. So putting Timber saw on top of my own creep, because he's going to want to put Ursa in front of mine, and then if I can get Ursa, like Ursa's going to kill Timbersaw. There's nothing we can do about that. It's going to take two turns, but it's going to be a grueling death. Uh, Underlord, I do want in the middle, which this is something I'll explain later why that is. Okay, so he puts him there. And just like before, we get to go back and forth with our cards. Uh, three mana is the starting point. And again, it's I only get three mana to use for the entire turn. It's all shared mana. Uh, they've redone a lot of the polish of the game, so the board is in a better state than it's been. A lot of the art is now done as well. And we just got a treat, ladies and gentlemen. I just got the best opening hand. All right, I'm actually very thankful he did this. That's Viscous Nasal Goo from Bristleback, so it's going to be on Timber. So Timber's going to die right away. We got the best turn one card in the game, Atrophy Aura, which is Underlord's signature. So we can just read it here. Enchant a unit, which... As before, it just means modify, essentially, permanently. Enemies in this lane within range 2. That's why I put them in the middle. So it does it for everything. Within range 2, have minus 1 attack. And then whenever one dies, this hero now will gain 1 damage permanently. 
So as I said, the creeps spawn on the left side. So they kind of just cancel each other out every round. And if I do this, for example, though, this has zero attack now, which means this creep will live and another one will spawn here. So this is a way to kind of widen up the lane. Uh, he put down a courier. This is something that they were just going to put as part of the game, but right now it's a card. It, It's just a tower enchantment, which is, used to be called improvement, but enchantments now. And it just... It, it just means you can play an item for free once per round. And the reason I say that, because I forgot to mention, everything costs mana in this game. But let's talk about the shop real quick. So I have 18 gold. I can upgrade the shop to get higher tier items. But uh, let me see if I want anything here. So it looks like I'm okay. Um... I think I'd rather just skip. So if I skip, I get five gold, and then I can upgrade next turn to get kind of a higher tier item. But everything costs mana in this game, like literally everything. Abilities cost mana if you have an active. Playing items technically cost mana, but like I said, the courier allows you to play one for free every round. So we got Beastmaster coming in. Uh, let me see what my hand looks like here. So Beastmaster, we'll put him here, and we have his boar to use this round if we want, which again, costs one mana. Looks like he put LC in this lane. Okay, so we have four mana. I could put down this creep, which taunts um, here, but I don't really want to because I'd rather just uh, play boar. So let's talk about Tidehunter because he's really good. So he has a passive now called Anchor Smash, and whenever I play a card that's not an item, I strike enemies adjacent to me, so that still means the three units, for one damage, and then I give them minus one attack for the rest of the round. Oh, boy, that sucks. Um, that really sucks. He just played a card that ignores damage of two or less, so I can't actually do anything. Yikes. That's very bad for me, actually. Um, we can bounce him, though, coming up, I think. We'll do that. Either way, I want to get my boar going. So I can put a boar down for Beastmaster, and if it's next to me, we both gain stats. So you can see it starts as a 1-2, but now it's boosted because it's next to me, and I get boosted as well. Very nice. Some of these cards they change the names for, so I need to read them. Summon a Vengeful Ghoul. Sure. Uh, actually, I can get this down going. This is pretty much the same as before. So Soul of Spring, I'll get three regen for every card that I play. So let's just keep Underlord nice and healthy because... This creep is going to die every round, so we can just continue to gain stats over time. Initiative system is basically the same as well, so we just... You can see the coin. You can't see the coin from my side when it's on me because my fat face is in the way, but that's the coin. All right, so we have 30 gold. I can upgrade my shop. This is a good item. Let me see what else I have in the shop here. I don't have anything... Cra I could actually save up. That would be interesting. This is a really good item, though. Um, all right, I'm going to play Greedy. I'm going to play really Greedy. I want to get, like, a high-tier item since it's for fun. All right, this is a new mechanic that was put in, so I can bounce heroes. So here I can see I'm going to die through the combat phase. So uh, what I'm going to do is bounce Tide. So this essentially just means I replace him. Uh, he comes back to the fountain. And then Tiny, I'll put over here. And Tiny is a really important unit that I want to get grow off. It looks like I'm basically guaranteed to do so. So that's nice. I'm a little bit in trouble here. Tusk can deal a lot of damage if you leave him alone. And it looks like we can't really do that much. I can play one card to gain a little bit of regen if he puts that in, but not a whole lot else. So... Tiny is a cool one. Every three rounds, I can activate Grow. He actually popped it. So he just doubled his damage here, which... Either way, I'm going to pop Grow. Gives me 4-4 four, four stats permanently. I'm a 6-8 now. I love Tiny. He's a very cool hero, and his card is really cool as well, if I ever draw it. Uh, but like I said before, that costs one mana, so... We'll just chill. I'm actually okay trading with Sven here. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, okay, he put that same card that was on Sven on Ursa now, so Ursa will not die to creeps eventually. So that's a little bit of annoying. A little annoying. 
Um, all right, let's play this. How much regen do I get from this again? I get three regen by playing a card. So let's just play anything. This is a creep that when it dies, it'll spawn a better creep underneath. So there's my regen activated and I still have some cards to play. These poised to strikes are doing nothing except for killing some creeps, which actually over here is okay. Cause then my, my guy, that's not the worst. It's not like I'm getting good use out of these anyway. So let's use this. Oh, I forgot that, oops. I forgot that this is an aura, so it blocks the damage uh, to neighbors as well, which is really good against Timber Saw as well. So I've been kind of hard counter with some of these. All right, we will continue. So this is kind of the difference of the RNG that I was discussing. This card in Artifact 1 would just strike one time, or strike three times, deal one damage three times randomly. Now it deals the damage to the lowest HP target, so it's more controlled. All right, we're going to continue to upgrade. Okay, this is actually a really good card. I think I will get this. Uh, Vlad's 35 gold item. Allied units have four armor and lifesteal. Whew. I actually don't know why that's only 35 gold. That is super good. So I think I'm actually okay putting Tide back here. I don't see any reason not to. Um, although... I do have Gush, so I can kill pretty much anybody. Um, all right, let's go here. I'm going to bounce this. This is actually not bouncing. This just kills the creep. We'll leave Bristle back alone for now. So I have Gush in my hand, which is really good for Tide because it'll deal two damage and then apply minus two armor. And then my Anchor Smash goes off for one damage, right? And armor works a little bit differently in this game. That's another mechanic. Um, armor was really overpowered in Artifact 1. In this game, it's think of it as like temporary HP. Anyway, so we're going to see Gush. This essentially does five damage with Tidehunter, if there's a unit next to him. And she has effectively five HP. So we're just going to go for it. So two damage, minus two armor. Then you'll see my Anchor Smash go off right there. Boom, boom, boom. And we gain the regen as well. Anyone Blink dagger on Ursa. So I guess he wants to try to do something over here, which is fine. I could roar him, actually. How bad is roaring right now? Um, I could also kill some creeps here. I'm trying to see if this is even worth... Where is he going? I don't think he's doing anything useful, right? All right, I'm going to put Vlad's... I'm just going to waste some time here. Put Vlad's on Mr. Underlord. Underlord has Dark Rift, which allows me to move him and closest allies to any lane, which is really good in draft. I could have roared him, but I didn't uh, because I can just get this for free pretty much. So I put down another boar. Another boar will spawn with the same stats as the other one, and then I'll gain even more damage. So I'm getting this tower. And anytime you get a tower, you get a blink scroll, which allows you to blink to an adjacent lane. So that's another way to work around. Um, I'm going to lose initiative here, but I do want to... Do I want to cast anything? This Whirling Death doesn't really do that much. Poised to Strike... Also isn't going to do anything to, for the... I believe Sven is the one that has Unbreakable Column, right? So we'll just cast it now to get rid of this creep at least. Deal one more damage. And I get even more regen. So this is going to be really difficult for him to come into this lane. So remember, Tidehunter's Ravage will go two slots over. So he has to put one hero here. And this is a huge difference between Artifact 1 and 2 is the multi-casting rules. So I'm going to just pass now. So let's just say, in theory, Tidehunter gets stunned. In Artifact 1, that means I can only cast green cards, right? But in Artifact 2, I can still cast green cards with Tide as long as there's a green hero there. So, or vice versa, Underlord can cast red cards as long as there's still a living red hero. So he can be silenced or stunned, and it doesn't matter. So that, that's a cool 
quality of life change. Uh, let's get the phase boost just in case we want to move Tidehunter over here to get a full Ravage. In the meantime, I think we go with uh, Timber Saw. Ooh. We still have this unbreakable column here, so I can't do anything for killing these creeps, which makes me sad. But I can still go for 30 here relatively easily. Um, if he quill sprays me, it does four damage, which is kind of whatever. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go here. I'm gonna take over this creep so I can timber chain over here if I need to. That kills this creep, allows me to hit the tower again. So he needs something to deal with Tidehunter immediately. Or he's done. Or is he? Let me think. Uh, All right, let's Ravage. We'll figure this out later. <laughs> Trying to think. Because remember, Anchor Smash I still have in my arsenal. So I've stunned him. There's pretty much no way for him to get over here now because we see that he has no items to blink over. He hasn't gotten a tower yet, so he doesn't get a blink scroll like me. Uh... So I'm going to Timber Chain here to open up a slot, and then I can figure out what I want to do. Keeping in mind that Anchor Smash has still not been procced. Um, so if I can get Underlord... Yeah, I can get Underlord to just hit through here. So that's actually an easy win. I don't need any anything else. If he had put this hero here, then I wouldn't be able to do this. But we're going to Timber Chain over. It's going to kill this creep. But in the meantime, we'll do one damage to that one. Opens it up, get the old phase boots rolling. And we move on over here, and that is lethal. Beautiful. And that is GG. Good game, well played. So that is Artifact 2.0 Draft. Uh, now that it, this game is over, I can kind of go over a couple different things that I wrote down about the differences in case you're interested. Um, Let's see. Talked about multi multi casting rules. So there's some new cards that are multi. I don't know what they call them. They're just multi multi colored almost. Um, here's an example. Actually, I have a better example. This one is so good. Centaur Warband. So this is a green six six creep. Right. If you play it with the green hero, it's just a six six creep. Plain and simple. If you have a red hero in the lane as well then this unit battles adjacent enemies. So it's like an instant uh, battling unit. So that these are the kind of cards that they've put in the game that have made it very spicy. This, in addition to what I was talking about earlier, the multi-casting rules have changed the way the game is played in a lot of ways. Uh, like dual colors are far better than they used to be. Mono colors was always dominant for so long. You guys remember there were some cases where there was four, like four red heroes, one black, just... Three two splits weren't a really weren't really a thing because you could disable one hero and you can't cast those cards anymore. So now there's even more incentives to work with. Um, there's also factions were added. So let's look at Mr. Centaur War Runner. Wait, is he? Am I an idiot? Yes. Well, no, I'm not an idiot, but well, kind of. Marifal Hunters. Uh, I want to talk about factions. Let's talk about Legion then. This one's easier. So they added factions. So Legion Commander is part of the Bronze Legion. And there's other cards that are part of the Bronze Legion. So let's look at one as an example here. Imperial Herald is just a creep. It's a 2-1-2. Two, two. And when you play it, it'll give all Bronze Legion units everywhere, meaning in your entire deck, one attack and one armor permanently. Also buffs itself. And it also works on Legion Commander since she's part of that. So they added a bunch of factions, uh, which makes it a little bit more interesting as well. Um, items, which we barely got to see, were changed quite a bit. So in Artifact 1, you had an attack slot, an armor slot, and an HP slot. Now you kind of just get two slots to put whatever you want. So you can have two attack items if you want, or whatever mix and match, but you can only have two. But yeah, I guess that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. This was, again, just to kind of show the old Artifact 1 players that probably don't play anymore what Artifact 2.0 looks like. Uh, again, link in the description if you want to download and give it a try. It's completely free to play. I will be making another video probably tomorrow about or a new video for new players that have never even touched Artifacts. It's going to be much more basic than this one. 
And then after that, we're going to have a tournament this coming week. So stay tuned for that. Okay, until next time. <laughs> Suns fan, hopefully it's not an annual video. Suns fan signing out. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Hopefully you guys enjoy the game. Uh, goodbye. I also forgot to mention that I stream three days a week at twitch.tv slash sunsfantv. Typically start with Dota, and I pretty much, until I get sick of the game, play Artifact every night. So you can catch me uh, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, or just check out the VODs. All right, link is also in the description. Have a good one, guys.